Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in my How to Move to Norway series. And today I want to talk to you about uh, learning Norwegian. Now why do I cover this so early? Well, that is because learning Norwegian is the most important thing you will do when you move to Norway. You might understand this but maybe you do not fully understand how important it is. So I'm going to talk about a few things in this video. First, I'm going to tell you why you probably will get around in Norway without speaking Norwegian. Then I will tell you why you do not want to get around without speaking Norwegian. And then I will talk a little bit more about how I started learning Norwegian. Uh, what are uh, the different resources I could give you and how you could learn Norwegian, what I think the best strategy is. And then I also will uh, talk a little bit about the different kinds of Norwegian, because there is not one Norwegian. I wish it was that simple, but it is not. So learning Norwegian is actually something you should start with as early as possible. So if you think you might move to Norway, you start learning now. If you have a plan of, okay, I'm going to move uh, to Norway on that date, you start, you should, you should have started learning already. And I totally understand that when you think, oh, uh, learning the language, it's something that will come as a byproduct of living in the country. And that is actually true, but it will go much, much slower if you don't have this motivation and this uh, basic knowledge before you arrive. I also understand why you are maybe a bit a bit hesitant, like you know it's very important but still you're not super motivated and that's probably because learning a language takes a lot of effort. Maybe if you're a really language genius you can just like soak in a language like a sponge but I hope I'm not alone in this that learning a language takes effort. You can't just walk around and expect your mind to just like take in all the Norwegian and just poof. <laughs> you actually need to learn, like textbook learn, in my opinion. And when you're planning an immigration or when you're just living a normal life, you're probably very, very busy and taking up learning a language together with being very, very busy or planning your immigration. And I know it's difficult. But it is the most important thing you can do. Now, but first I will contradict myself a little bit and I will tell you why you will get around in English as well. And that is because many people here in Norway, especially in the bigger cities, the younger people and the people in the business environments, they will speak very well English. So you will probably get around pretty well on uh, several work floors. And that is, of course, if you don't have to work with people, so I'm not talking about doctors and nurses and, and everyone that has daily contact with uh, customers and people. I do not speak about those jobs because you're definitely in the region for those. But you have a different business environments where you can perfectly, uh, the first months, practice your job in English. Maybe if you move to uh, a big city or you just move to Oslo and you are you're offered a job there, probably normal that there are international companies there who just have English as, as working language. But that is not that is not the rule. That is not the rule in Norway. Just so you know. Also if you go to the shops, if you go to the restaurants, if you go to all places that probably have seen a tourist or two, like uh, gasoline stations, little shops, uh, all touristic places, they probably can serve you in English. Most of the government's websites are even partially uh, accessible in English. So I'm talking about the uh, website of the government, the tax administration, also the websites of the big banks. They are partially accessible in English. If you want to access one of the customer services, you can just ask, can we please talk in English? And then they will find someone for you who will speak very good English. Also no problem there. We have definitely spoken English in Norway. I can give you two examples of when we speak English. When we just arrived in Norway our first few months and we had to go to our local bank and we had to talk about insurances. 
Uh, what insurances are important here in Norway? How does it work? How oh, does everything cost? What do we need? And that was kind of a difficult conversation with a lot of difficult questions he wanted to ask and our Norwegian was definitely not enough to be 100% sure that we understood each other. So in that instance, we spoke English and the bank was perfectly able to help us in English. Another instance where uh, I actually, actually still speak English, that's, that's uh, one of the only times I still speak English here in Norway, is when I talk to my accountants. So we will do our chit chat in Norwegian, so we will start and end in Norwegian. But when we really talk about uh, the tax stuff and the, the accountancy stuff, that for me that is a way too difficult conversation with too many difficult Norwegian words that I do not know. And I'm not 100% sure that I would get the whole meaning of the conversation. And I do not want that to happen when we talk about finances. So that is the only time when I still speak English in Norway. I just tell you this because you should not be afraid that if you do not speak perfectly fluent Norwegian you will not get around because everything will be okay. It is a learning process and from Norway is perfectly able to ex uh, help you in that learning process so you will be able to get your help in English too. But in spite of everything I just said I will encourage you to not rely on this too much because Norwegian is such an important part of Norway that you just you will never get real access to the country, you will never get really close to the society, to the people when you do not speak Norwegian. The whole culture of Norway is just intertwined with this language. The way they say things, the way they express themselves, the words they have, the words they don't have, everything is very, very intertwined with how their, how their society and how their culture works. So if you want to get to you know the country and the people, you want to understand their habits and the way of life better, then learning your region is a super big part of this. Also, a lot of Norwegians are maybe not, they may, might be able to help you in Norwegian, but most people, especially if, you, if I'm talking about older people and if you go to the countryside, or even just people who are not so good in languages in general, I mean, there are a lot of younger people who are not so very well in languages, they will not be completely comfortable speaking Norwegian, and therefore, uh, yeah, it's maybe part of the cliche that Nordic people are a bit like, they keep a bit their distance in the beginning. They have like this, this, um, this coconut uh, personality. So you have a really hard shell and it's really soft inside, but you have to get through this really past stern shell first. So if you do not speak Norwegian, for some people, this shell will just <laughs> get really, really big. For example, we have a really good contact here with our neighbors where we live. We live in the countryside, we live in a village with only 300 inhabitants. And most of our neighbors are a little bit older. And we have super good contact with them. So we, we speak to them on a daily, weekly basis. They just spontaneously come over, they say hi, we make little talks. And I can guarantee you that we would not have this close and good contact with our neighbors would we not speak Norwegian with them. So if you want to get to know your neighbors, if you want to get really familiar with them on, on a level that Norwegians are familiar with other Norwegians, you should speak Norwegian. Also, don't be, don't be too afraid to sound, to make mistakes and to sound really weird and funny because I'm sure if I speak Norwegian, I do sound very weird and funny sometimes. But Norwegians are also super polite, so they will probably <laughs> not tell you and they, will be, and they will be very open and receiving and respond very positively when you, when you just try. They're very open to it. They're very encouraging for you to speak Norwegian, even though it might be chock full of mistakes. <laughs> also, if you don't speak Norwegian, you will probably always stay an outsider, not only to your neighbors, but also to the community you live in because everything will be organized in a region. Also, you won't be able to read the local newspaper, so you have no idea what's actually going on. 
You won't be able to take part in events, you probably won't even know they are going on because they're announced in the region and people... Sometimes people just talk to each other and that's, it's not really an announcement that something is going to happen, everyone just knows. <laughs> and like sport clubs and other hobby clubs and everything will be in Norwegian. So if you want to take part in the community life, and I encourage you to do so because community life is a very big part of Norwegian culture, then you should speak Norwegian. You will not get around in English. You might go, but you will not understand what is going on. These activities, this community life, everything that's going on in the community, it's a very big part of um, how Norwegian life is organized. And so taking part in activities, taking part in... Um, what's the... what's the English word for this? They have a specific thing in Norway where they just like come together and they all help to build something or they help help to clean something or they just do voluntary work for something very specific, it's called Dugnat. And those things, also other activities like joining a sports club, uh, joining an, an outdoor activity club, uh, going on uh, organized trips together, this is the best way to get to know people and to make friends in Norway because you will have something in common. So if you want to get to know the people, if you want to really integrate and take part in the community, you need Norwegian. Really, you really need Norwegian. You might come across people who will just like translate for you and talk a little bit to you in English, but you will never get really, really get to know them. I mean, that's the feeling I have. Maybe if you live in a big city and you have a lot of expats around there and people are perfectly fine talking in English all the time, I mean, I'm really happy for you. But if you go to the countryside or just if, if you want to enrich yourself with part of a Norwegian culture, you should learn Norwegian. So, how should you go about learning Norwegian? I will give you what I think is the best strategy. I will give you some different options on how you could learn Norwegian. And then I will give you also a little bit of uh, resources. Now, like I said before, you should learn as soon as possible. As soon as possible. At least a year before you move, I would say. If you, if you come from a non-Germanic language, you should learn maybe a little bit earlier. Because it might take you a little bit longer to learn the language. Because it is important to have some sort of basis before coming here. Because uh, textbook Norwegian, uh, classroom Norwegian or whatever, is not the same as daily real use of the language. You probably, even if you have some sort of basis and you come here, and especially in the countryside and, and places where they speak a little weird dialect, you will probably, oh no, I don't understand anything anymore. But those, this basis that you have will help you immensely. So if you come to Norway and you already have a basis in Norway, meaning that you know the basic verbs like to be and to have and, and um, you know the basic phrases and you know what are most returning words and you have some sort of knowledge about how sentences are constructed, how verbs are conjugated, what are the common things to say when you go, when you leave, when you go to the shop. So that will mean that you will recognize those elements when people speak. You will be able to pick out words, you will be able to pick out um, the different sentence structure. You may not understand everything, but you will get a basic feeling of, okay, okay, we're going to get there. Like, I, I understand that this is a language with a subject and a verb, and it will help you immensely, it will be encouraging for you. Because if you come here, if you go to any language and you, you don't know anything about it and you hear people talk it just sounds like a rumble right you don't even recognize the different words and it make will make you much more difficult to learn Norwegian on a daily speaking basis just by living here when you don't have a basis. I explain this very poorly <laughs> but I, I hope you get the message that when you don't know anything and everything just sounds like a rumble it will take you so much longer to start learning just by being here than when you already have a basis and you can recognize the different sentence structure and the different elements of the sentence and you understand the basic words. 
it will make it very, very easy for you to just learn by being here. It will be much more encouraging for you. That way, when you come here with the basis, the learning process will be a hundred times faster than when you come here without any basis at all. So, okay, now we have established that you should start learning now or you should have been start learning. And even if you would not end up moving to Norway or you don't end up staying here, then you have just learned a language that is a really cool life skill. And maybe that language will help you in learning other languages. So it's not a waste of time. I know there are different uh, popular learning apps like Duolingo. And that is great. That's a really fun way to uh, practice a language that you maybe know a little bit or you have forgotten a little bit or you're learning a little bit. It's maybe a really fun way or a really different way to practice that language. But I would really, really encourage you to take it a bit more seriously than language apps. So most people, and probably you as well, you need a more structured and detailed way of learning Norwegian. You need to, um, you need to learn grammar rules, you need tables full of verbs that are conjugated, you need actual listening and speaking and writing exercises, you need to learn words, you need to know how the sentence structure works. And in my opinion, Duolingo and other apps do not give you like actual textbook classroom level of learning a language. If you, if you look back at high school and how you learned English or French, for example, I hope you understand what I mean here. It is not the same. So my top tip, if you have the ability, if you have the option in your surroundings to take an actual language course, like actually go physically to a classroom and have a teacher there for you, I would encourage you to do that. So that is what uh, my husband and I, that's what we did. We followed the whole year from September to June. We followed a language course at the University of Antwerp, where we lived by the, back then. It was two hours a week. It was with a teacher and it was a very, very good language course. In that school year we went to a Norwegian level of somewhere in between A1 and A2, which is pretty good for just one year of learning. And for us that level of Norwegian was enough to get this going really fast once we arrived here in Norway. However, I do want to make a side note here because our mother, my mother tongue is Dutch. And Dutch is a language that, aside from Danish and Swedish, lies very, very close to the Norwegian language. So I do understand I have a big advantage here. For example, when I'm talking to people and I do not know the Norwegian word for it, I just try it in Dutch and 50% of the time the word in Dutch is close enough to the Norwegian word that they just understand what I talk about. This is a huge advantage. I'm so happy about it. Um, also, if you come from English, uh, English also has a lot of similarities with Norwegian and even German has some similarities with Norwegian. But more important than what your mother tongue is, is how you will use it here in Norway. Uh, for example, my husband, he goes to his job every day and for the 40 hours he is at his job every day, he has to speak for in Norwegian, so it's constantly phone calls and talking to people and having meetings and talking to elderly folk and he's constantly speaking Norwegian. So his Norwegian is better than mine by now. Because I sit at home most of the time for my job. So more, more important than your mother tongue is how frequently and how intensely do you use Norwegian when you live here. It will be a big advantage for you if you just... It will be very hard in the beginning, of course, if you just like get to throw in Norwegian life. <laughs> and you just have to talk Norwegian, it will go very, very fast. Within months you will, you will see a massive improvement. That is if you have a basis to start it. So my advice is, if you have a language course in your neighborhood, take the language course. 
but not everybody is lucky enough of course to live close to a big city where they even offer Norwegian courses. So in that case uh, I have a really good alternative for you. I would recommend you take an online course. It's exactly the same but it's with a virtual classroom. So it is live. Yeah, you all, you all know this by now from the COVID uh, period. So it's just learning but from a distance, like you're in the actual classroom and it's actually live, but you're just behind a computer screen. Then I would recommend you go to Alpha Skolen. It doesn't matter what your mother tongue is, they will have courses for you. I will link uh, the link from Alpha Skolen uh, here in the description box if you are interested in having a classroom experience of learning Norwegian. They offer all kinds of stuff. They offer full year stuff, but I think they only they I think they also have like shorter courses and just like have a look around if you're interested in that. Another thing to consider of course, uh, language courses are usually not cheap. And even though it is worth every single cent to put your money in a language course because the language is so important. I think it is worth it to invest in that, but I know sometimes you just don't have the money. So there are other alternatives as well. Also time is to consider because sometimes people have a job and they can't be free every week at the same hour, or you just don't have time in general to commit two hours in learning a region. You want to go about it a little bit more slowly. So in both cases that you don't have time enough or you don't have money enough, then self-study might be a good idea for you. My only problem with self-study is that you have to be really disciplined. When you go to a course, you are forced to follow along with the, the learning speed that the teacher or the, the class uh, puts upon you. So it forces you to keep up with a very good, uh, healthy level of learning narration. It also makes sure that by the end of the course, you obtain a certain uh, level, a certain knowledge level and it really puts this pressure on you to keep up with it like on a weekly basis because on a weekly basis you will have exercises that you have to do, you have things to learn, maybe you have some tests in between so it really forces you to keep up with it. If you're doing self-study you do not have that so you need the discipline for yourself and I know if you are very busy it is of course the things that you have to do will you do first and then Norwegian learning will become something you want to do and you, it might be very easy to just like put it aside for this week and then maybe next week and then so I do think that at least it will be the case for me um, it will go slower it will go less structured because of course you wouldn't be forced to do all the different kind of exercises maybe you do only the things <laughs> you like to do not so much the things you don't want to practice so much because you don't like to practice it so much so Self-study can, can work really well for some people, it can work really badly for other people, but maybe it is motivation enough if you know, okay, I'm going to move to Norway, I like, absolutely need Norwegian, and maybe that pressure for you is enough to provide you with enough motivation to go about self-study as you would go about learning in a classroom. So I have three uh, books for you here that you could use in your self-study. These are books that I have used and I'm currently using myself. These are also the books that are currently used in classrooms. So it are actually structured textbooks for how to learn Norwegian. Uh, most of these books have an online website where you can, um, where you get access to, for example, uh, the exercise pages. So you fill in exercise and the website corrects you. That's very easy because then you don't need a teacher to provide you with the corrections for the exercises. Also, all of these books will come with some audios, so you can actually practice your listening and your um, speaking because you will be able to hear how it sounds. You will not have someone who explain to you the different things in, but most of the grammar is also explained. And another advantage of these books I will show you is that it doesn't matter which uh, language you have as a mother tongue. So all of these books are completely in Norwegian, but don't worry about it because in the beginning it's so easy that you will understand what it's, what, yeah, by context what it's uh, about. And also for all of these books, you can buy the, um, you can buy the books with like the translations. So you can, for example, 
by the, the French Norwegian, you can the Polish Norwegian, the Spanish Norwegian and whatever. So you can buy these books aside from the text and the workbook. So you have the translations available for you as well. So when I started learning Norwegian, I started with uh, this one. It's called Ni uh, Norga, and this is the level, the one that I used in the classroom when I started following courses in Belgium. It's the A1 until A2. When I was in high school, I did not like to learn languages, but I have to say that this book, it is an extremely good book. They use like examples for uh, you go to the shop or you take the bus and there are many examples in this book that I'm so grateful that I actually had to learn these <laughs> fake conversations because I actually used them afterwards. And it's so funny because I had never done that before with any language that I actually took a fake conversation that I learned in a language class and I actually ended up using that conversation in real life. So uh, this is a really good book. I will, I will, by the way, link all of these books in the description box so you can go to the website of these books and maybe purchase them as well if you want. So this book was very good. Then, of course, I have two more textbooks. So this one is uh, Stein by Stein. This is level uh, B1, so the, the level that comes after A2. And then we have Hey. So this is also level B1. I will explain to you why I have two, because Norwegian, it's not just one Norwegian. <laughs> In Norway, they work with two writing languages. So you have, at the one hand, you have the Bokmal, and that is the language uh, written by, I think, 80% of all of Norway. That's the official writing language. And this language is very um, has much of uh, Danish influence. The other language, the other writing language, is called Nynorsk. Yeah, this is only used by like twenty percent of the population, I think. And most often, it's on the west coast, like the not in the middle, not in the south, but like between middle and south, like on the west coast somewhere there is the official writing language, the official communication language is Nynorsk and that's where I live, <laughs> of course. So I needed a book in Nynorsk as well and because the biggest part of the population uh, uses Bokmal, that's obviously the language that will be offered in language courses outside of Norway. So we learn Bokmal and I think if you follow language courses in, in your country, it's probably Bokmal as well. It's not so different, you know, it's, it's definitely written differently. Like, if you read it, you will be like, whoa, <laughs> what, what the hell is this? But it's not that different that you won't understand it anymore. So they just throw a bunch of G's and a bunch of A's in there. <laughs> and then they have this new writing language. And the Nynorsk is actually the, a more traditional way of Norwegian. It is, um, yeah, you just can look this up on Wikipedia. I'm not going to explain to you why they have two writing languages. The point is they do. And uh, Bokmal is more Danish influenced, it's more newer. And the Nynorsk, despite its name, is actually more traditional way of writing Norwegian. Now, those are the two writing languages. And then, of course, Norway has a thousand dialects. <laughs> Every region will have its own dialect and the people living there will be very damn proud of it. <laughs> so if you learn classroom Norwegian or you buy one of these books and you listen to the audio and whatever, then you will go to the west coast where I live and you will hear people talk and you will not understand the damn thing anymore <laughs> because it's really, it, it's, the dialects are really different in Norway. It's not like a very slight difference. No, it's really different. But then, then if you live in a place with like a very pronounced um, dialect and you go back to Oslo, it will be so simple for you because the Oslo Norsk is, it's, how, how do I explain this? It's more, it's not so fast and they explain, they, they really like pronounce their words and they make like this, they make it sound so happy. <laughs> they go like up and down and, so if you move to Norway and you go to Oslo or you live in Oslo, 
then it's very close to what you actually learn in classroom and it's also very very close to what you actually learn on the audio files of these textbooks. If you go anywhere else <laughs> you might need a bit of an adaptation. Also they say that it's two writing languages but where I live, where they write, and the official uh, writing and communication language is Nynorsk, I do feel like they definitely speak the way they write as well. So if they write different words in a particular way, they will pronounce it as well like it is written. So although Nynorsk might not be like a speaking language, it's like they talk about dialects then, I do feel like there are many similarities. But then again, if you want to really know the difference between Nynorsk and Bokmal, I would, I would please go to Wikipedia and read it for yourself because you're not going to get a good explanation from me. But so that is why I have two B1 um, textbooks right here. It's one in uh, Bokmal and one in Nynorsk. Because, uh, yeah. To be fair, I have not learned that much in these books this far because I wanted to take a break from taking courses uh, when we lived in Belgium still. I had many years of taking evening school aside from my job and I was a bit tired of that. Also, I just wanted to, the basis I had uh, when I came to Norway, I just wanted to implement this basis and get better just by living here. And that's what I'm doing. I am improving a lot by just living here. I do have these textbooks and I really plan on like getting like really through them but that's maybe something for next year. Also I'm, I'm, I'm still doubting whether I should do both or I just just focus on Nynorsk. I'm not quite sure yet. These books have been helpful already but I have to admit that I'm not really really like self-study learning and um, right now I'm just learning by living here. I also think that I'm very interested in actually taking another language course here because if you, yeah, if you here in Norway in your community language courses will be organized. Depending on how big the city is or how big the villages that you live in, you might have to go to a bigger village or a bigger city in the neighborhood and they might not organize every language level every year. So just like ask around, see around what's available. And I definitely plan on maybe in the coming years follow another language course depending on what my level is then you have to take an entry test or something. And they will like direct you like oh you should like do this level, you should do that level. Because as much as it is a very good thing to just learn by living here, it does not improve my uh, writing skills so much. Like it, it does and it doesn't. Like the words I need to write something I just look it up but I feel like it would be very good for my uh, writing skills and also just for my grammar skills <laughs> because it's I do think it's very difficult to learn like grammar and sentence structure and stuff like that when you just live around. I just also like a lot of conjugations for verbs maybe. It might be good for me to take another course in the future so I'm definitely going to do that. It might just not be next year, it might be the year after or when I think okay now, now I just definitely need a language course to get really better. So how is my Norwegian? Maybe you're interested in how my Norwegian is uh, at the moment. Uh, I do get around. I can take most of my conversations in Norwegian. I, I probably make a lot of mistakes. But Norwegians are just way too polite to tell me I think. Also it's a very... it's not an elegant way that I use the language. It's very like brute and straightforward and like me tours on you Jane. <laughs> so it's not, a, it's not a very refined and elegant way of speaking that I have. But of course how could it be after only like one year of living here. So I do expect that I need a lot of more years to get fluent in it or at least so I sound a bit more elegant and refined when I speak Norwegian so it's very it's very brute, I would say it's very brute for the moment. Uh, however, I will probably do some guiding work in the this summer and it will be in Norwegian. So I do think that my Norwegian might improve a little bit more, even over the summer again. 
but it's still it's very I, I do believe it's still basic it's way better than when i arrived here in norway so it's way way better than um than maybe this textbook that i ended especially in speaking and conversing i'm a lot better than when i arrived i definitely a lot better but and by all means, not even close to being fluent. So also give yourself time. Everyone's process is different. Everyone's daily life is different. Everyone will learn at a different speed, depending on what your daily activities look like or how much you need the language. So just give yourself time and be gentle with yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. And my, my strategy for the moment is just to blur. <laughs> When I speak, I just, I, I do not hold myself in, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I just talk and whatever comes out, comes out, and most of the time they understand what I mean. It might sound really, really weird sometimes, but maybe, maybe that's a good idea for you to just like talk and see what comes out. And if you have to use an English word here and there, or you have to use a Dutch word here and there, or you have to use a very weird verb to try and say something else, or you have to talk around something because you don't know a word. It doesn't matter, just talk. And just by speaking, 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 you will learn much faster than when you like keep endlessly thinking in your head, okay, how should I say this? And very carefully trying to say a few correct sentences. Just it's better to say 20 sentences wrong than two good ones, just because you have more practice. I mean, that's my opinion. And I have not, people have not like told me, oh, like, Helen, seriously, what are you doing? It's really, really bad. <laughs> people have not told that to me, but then of course they are very, Norwegians are very positive and encouraging when you speak Norwegian with them. So maybe they just don't dare to tell me, I don't know. I know nothing. Why are you even listening to me? I don't know. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, um, I think I'm going to end the video here. You found all the uh, resources I just talked about. I will put them in the description box. And then we, we see each other in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this. And I really hope you have learned at least something useful. Bye bye.